Good afternoon everybody and welcome to this hangout here this afternoon on Google Plus with the fabulous Derek Mills. Derek, it's an absolute pleasure to be here with you today Thanks, yeah, yeah. and thank you so much for, yeah. uh, for doing this interview and for sharing your inspiration yeah, with our pleasure. audience yeah, out here today. Here. Thanks for asking me. No problem at yeah, yeah. all. So we met um, probably about six weeks, two months ago now yeah. mm -hmm. at an event in London. Mm -hmm. um, and when we got talking, I was struck immediately by your passion and by your vision to, to change things and to, to really change the world by sharing your philosophy. Yes. And I was so inspired by it that I wanted to bring you to the masses here okay. today so they could get inspired and share as well. And really understand a little bit more about how you came to where you are today, mm -hmm. what that journey involved, because having read the book myself a couple of times now, right. okay. I can relate to quite a few things in okay. there personally, yeah, yes. and, mm -hmm. and I think it's, it's wonderful to be able to share with our audience mm -hmm. how you arrived at that. Okay. So, Derek. Happy to, yeah. Yeah, please. Tell us a little bit about yourself to start off with. Wow. Um... I think the key thing is, I said, I said my life uh, is a life of two parts. Uh, the first part being uh, as my non-self. I didn't know who I was, what I was doing, what the world was all about. And as a result of that time living in my non-self, I was unhappy. Um, I go even further than that, I say I was depressed, clinically unhappy. Um, and I was lost. Mm. So then I had a shift. As a result of that shift, I began to experience or channel or have messages from within that guided me. Mm -hmm. And they guided me to a, to a different life. Okay. And the life they guided me to was, was, was just a life of me, of being who I really am, the true self, which I discovered the language around who I really am. And as I began to live my life as my true self, I immediately became happy. Okay. Yeah, that was the first thing. And after that... Um, the most incredible things just kept on happening and, and still do, both inside of me and outside in the world. And that's what people began to pay attention to. How did this, I was a failure, suddenly with no more learnings, change his life and become something else. So I understand exactly what you're talking about mm. when you talk about true self, but can you share a little bit more with, okay. more with the yeah. audience about okay. what the true self is? Yeah. The true self is it's who you, it's the essence of who you truly are. It's what you came here as. Okay. So, if, say for example, I mean, some people, some people tend to believe that they uh, came to creation when they were born, mm -hmm. or even at the point of conception. Whereas I, I know that we were all we're all eternal. We were here before we were born, and um, after we die, we're still going to be here, but in a different way. So, the true self is the true essence of each of us, the real being that's inside of us, our, our awareness, which includes our skills. Mm -hmm. our abilities, the gifts we came here with, all the talents. And that's the true self, the real being inside. And to make it really, really clear, we're not this physical body. This isn't us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, much more learned people than I will share with you that, that your body changes, your cells shift every seven years, and everything, everything moves around. But regardless of where, of where you are in your body, you're not your body. You're just, you know, your body uh, works with you, and when they're working together, you experience bliss, and, and of course, one can conflict with the other. But the essence inside is the spirit of who you really are. And that's what I call the true self. It's who you really are. And I emphasize the point because in the world today, particularly in the 21st century, where we've gone through a massive period of expansion economically in the world in the last 70 to 80 years, most people still believe that they are their body. That if they're, if they're tall, beautiful, young, that they're successful. If they're 95 and not those things, maybe they're unsuccessful. And the body is nothing more than a vessel for your truth, your true self. And there are, there are components to the true self, which when we tap into those components, we begin, we begin to live a life which, is, which you would call extraordinary. Yeah. yeah. When you tap into the true self. So that's who you really are, the true self. And anything else that we do in our lives that isn't acting from that place... Is what's called non-self, uh, and that's uh, the non-self is typically driven by the ego, mm -hmm. uh, what we think we should be, do, and have, or by the world. What the world tells us: you've got to be like this, and this is what you must have, what you must wear, where you must live, and this means success, and this means failure. So all of those things conspire to put us out of our true self, 
and success come from being your true self because you can be happy in that place. Yeah, I hope that helps. It does, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and I think what's really fabulous about that, Derek, is you know, it's you what you you really hit on there was we get kind of really caught up by society and by mm. the influences that are around us, and because people get caught up by those things, they don't actually feel and believe that they can be who yeah. they want to be, and and that's what struck me the most was that you know the book very much talks about that it's okay for you to be that person yeah. and as you said you know ego and various different things yeah. drive us to these channels and mm -hmm. make us feel that we really need to be somebody that actually we don't want to be but we feel like we should conform and mm -hmm. and i think that the true self is very much about like you say being true to you mm -hmm. and being who you are because that's who you want to be and yeah. not because you're living by somebody else's guidelines and standards right. yeah, and, and right. you know and sort of belief. Yeah. yeah. You just give me goosebumps just then. Because <laughs> as you were talking, I'm thinking, well that's it. Yeah. Um, and when I woke up, you know, woke up about eight years ago I woke up after all those years of being asleep. I say I was asleep for about 18 years. Yeah. Uh, 18 years of my adult life, because as you're a child, you're still growing and you're a teenager, you're still developing. As an adult, for 18 years, I was asleep. Yeah. When I woke up, I realised just what you've said. I, I was desperately unhappy, and I was broke. Married, with children, saving the house from repossession. Yeah. Um, bailiffs coming into the house. No, that's never a good thing. It's not. <laughs> and, uh, and having issues and financial problems and all the rest of it. And then realising that actually I was desperately unhappy. I was clinically unhappy. I was never diagnosed by a doctor as being no. depressed. But you I knew, knew, I, I knew, I knew yeah, that yeah. I was really, really down there. Um, and part of the reason, when I woke up, one of the first things that came through me was, you're not happy, Derek, because you're not who you truly are. And you can't be truly happy as not you. No. Yeah? So... What that meant for me in that space was, actually, I've been living a life based on my clients, the world, the society, the media, the media, my community, my education, that all told me that I should be. And I was trying to be all these things. Mm -hmm. And this wasn't even in a materialistic way. It was just me trying to be what I thought I should be, based on what the world says that this guy should be. Um, and it led me, at the age of uh, 38, to being basically depressed. So at that point, I... What, 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 my truth began to speak to me. And my truth said, you know, just stop. You know? If you're going to go one more day on this planet, do it as you. Do it as you. And it's funny thing is, it's, that kind of made me think about, because the other thing that came out of me that night was, was to stop setting goals. And I'll come back onto that. There's one was to stop setting goals, which are future-based, and start living by daily standards. Yeah. And that really ties in because when we set goals... They are based on the future. Yeah. No matter if it's next week, next month, next year, five years, ten years, twenty years, it's a future-based thing. And when I've spoken to audiences of all different cultures and religions, and I ask them, so when you've got the house and you've got the promotion, you've got the whatever, you say to yourself, then you'll be happy. And people say, yeah, then I'll be happy. Well, and then when you get that thing, you then set another goal. When I've got that, then I'll be happy. And we go on. Which means that the happiness is always in the future. With yeah. the next goal, not about instead now. of being yeah. present right now today. We're living in the present. Except, well, we only have the present. You exactly. Know, but, um, you know, there is no past that we can re-inherit, and there's yep. no future that we can occupy. Because even when we get to the future, all we have is another now. Exactly. So it's about being now, about being present today, right now. Uh, you know, and I talk about that because my mother died when she was 36 years old. She died at an age where I was still asleep. If that makes sense, I didn't wake up till I was 38. She died at 36. What if I die? The thing about being asleep is that you don't know when you're going to go. Yeah. yeah? And if you, set, if you decide to yourself, you're going to be who you really are in the future one day. Well, how do you know you've got one day? How, how do you know the good Lord isn't going to call you today? today? Yeah, today. absolutely. What yeah. are you waiting for? So yeah. what's, what is this three and five and ten? Because having met with so many people over these years, people say, when I do this, then I'll be better with my husband better with my wife, I'd be the real me with my friends and definitely with the kids and I'd be like this and I would help those people and I would be this way and I would be enthusiastic and all that really happens is they put that off and they defer that without any thought or respect for the fact that they could literally be gone tomorrow. Absolutely, absolutely and you're absolutely yeah, yeah. right because one of my favourite sayings and one of the things that I encourage most with people is carpe diem. 
oh, seems yeah. the day. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, you've yeah. said that. And yeah. it's and and I think yeah. it's it's for all the reasons that you've just said, you know, mm. I mean part of my journey was having a real big moment of realization mm. and, and a breakdown and, mm. and kind of looking at my life and saying, actually I'm really not living my life in the way that I want to live it. Yeah. And and as you say, it, it, you know, goals are something that I think can be so demotivating mm. as well as motivating because it's it's always about the aspiration of the future, and like you say, the only thing that we all have is the present, is the present. and it's yeah. and it's being here and now and living in this moment and actually doing it right now. Uh, yeah, sorry. So what I was going to say next was, so in the book you talk about, in the 10 Second Philosophy, this is everybody, mm. this is a book that you definitely need to be getting a copy of, um, but in the book you talk about the moment where the realisation hit and the mm. moment where you just kind of, this is it, mm. I've got to make this change. Can yes. you tell us a little bit about what happened that day? Probably better than that. I can show you where it happened. Because <laughs> 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 it happened just behind you, just, right, just, okay. just over there. <laughs> We're in the place. <laughs> this is the room. Yeah. Because back then, well, you know, this is uh, this business. This um, you know, I work as a self-employed practitioner. Yeah. But it's all a meritocracy. In other words, you know, if you do okay, you get a nice office. If you don't, they put two or three of you in one office. Yeah, to, absolutely. To I so, can know, understand yeah, that. Then, then <laughs> so I should share this office. Yeah. And it was this office I was in. Like my, my, my desk was over there, and um, just it was one night, just late at the office, it was around kind of nine thirty in the evening. And the security guard came in uh, to the door and just said, no, no, time to lock up. And I said, well, give me 10 more minutes. And then he walked away again and then he came back. I said, well, give me two more minutes. And I was shuffling paper. Who am I going to call the next day? And I, no. To that point, I'd been driving around the country for scraps of business, driving down from the south to north to London, everywhere, trying to do business and see people. And I'd work any day. You name yeah. a day, I'll yeah. be there. I'll see you there. 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, at 9, yeah. 9 in the evening, yeah. I'll be, Saturday afternoon, I'll be there. And what was really happening was that um, my, my prospects or clients weren't respecting me. And what I figured out since, of course, is that people give you just as much respect based on the standards that you set for yourself. People yeah. give you the respect based on the standards that you set for yourself. Well, back then, I didn't know I even had standards. Yep. Because I, no one ever sat down with me and said, let's look at what your standards are. And standards, you know, for the purpose of the philosophy, as you know, are the basis, criteria, rules, qualities, and levels that we set from within, based on who we really are. Yeah. So we look at all those. Now, I didn't have any known standards. So that night in the office, I was just struggling. I was depressed. I was basically broke, looking for where the next you know, income's going to come from. And it's not good when you're just working just for cash flow. No. I would go somewhere, you know, down south, for example, to do some business, not to make any profits, just to have some cash flow. Yeah, and I can just relate to, to that <laughs> when I worked in the industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you, you, you kind of yeah, struggle yeah. for the next thing because yeah, yes. you don't have that strategy and yeah, you yeah. don't have yeah. a how I'm going to do it. You just know that that's what I've got to do. Yeah, yeah. And it's almost, it comes from a place of desperation, doesn't it? Absolutely. And that's such a key point. So one of the things I, I, I did that night, when the guard came back to the office to lock up, I said, give me those two more minutes. He just asked me one question. And part of the philosophy, as you know, shares that Anything can change the whole of our lives that can wake us up. And it can be a word, a thought, a question, as it was for me, you know, a phrase or an idea. It may not be like a, you, know, you haven't got to go to a huge meeting and to see something and have this whole light-flashing epiphany. You can just have a question on a billboard that in that moment catches you, catches you, and you go, and the idea is to take that inside of you and let it do something with you. So the security guard said to me, what time do you get in this morning? And I just said, well, 8 o'clock, 8 a.m. And then he walked away, and I began to, in that moment, just stood there and began to think, I've been up since 6, on the road since 7, in the office at 8, it's now almost 10 o'clock in the evening, that's my regular pattern, not seeing my wife, not seeing my, my children, it's ruining those relationships, not really got, I haven't really got any friends, um, I'm stressed out, I go to doctors all the time, and I said, to the words, to the effect, my life is poor, <laughs> worse that effect. And... That's when, as I stood there in that moment, I, f I felt a whole shift has come over me. The whole of my essence just said, I knew I was somewhere else. And I knew there was a message, there was a voice, there was something speaking to me from the inside. And I recognized the voice. It, it was my voice. Yeah. It's my true self that said to me, you know, you're not happy because you're not who you truly are. And you can't be truly happy as not you. And in, the, in that 10 seconds, concepts just came to me. Concepts such as, you know, if you're going to continue another day, do it as you. Stop setting goals. They're making you happy in the future. The future's never coming. 
start setting standards by daily standards, set from within and live by those daily standards. And since then, in the last eight years, so many more concepts just keep pouring out of me. And here's what I do. That very same night when I had that um, conversation with my true self, whatever guidance it gave to me, I followed it. This is one of the key things to people who I meet all over the world, I speak now speaking of, uh, all around the world, and a lot of people have guidance, have messages from, from within, they have words, thoughts, phrases, ideas come to them, inspiration, intuition, um, words, messages, and here's what they do. They shove them back inside and go on with what the world thinks that they should be or do or how they should behave. Well, that thing inside of you, that thing inside of me, is a genius. Yes. So when we get into that true self space, when we stop, pause, and go inside and let the message sink, as in whatever it be, a word, thought, question, phrase, whatever that side of us, let it go inside of us. The next thing to do is to listen to the words, thoughts, questions, phrases, and ideas that come from inside of us. That's the intuition, that's the instinct, that's the inner guidance, that's your guru speaking to you. You don't need a 40,000 year old guru that charges you 100,000 pounds a year to, as to how to be yourself. Yourself is already in you, yeah. but it speaks to you through messages and intuition, and intuition is the language of true self. And that language can come in words, thoughts, questions, phrases, and ideas. So what I uh, did that night, and I do to this day, did, I did it today, some of the stuff I was talking about earlier on, is that whenever I have a word, a thought, a question, a phrase, or idea, or a feeling about something, I just said, that's my true self speaking to me. Yeah. And I followed it. Yeah. Go right instead of left, I'd go right. Call that person now instead of them, I'd call that person. Do this with your business, I'd do that. Stop doing that and I'll do that, and I'll just follow my intuition. And it's very hard, in the past, people said, to, people said to me, that's a really brave thing to do. I mean, just followed your own inner voice and stop doing this to the other people in the community and the industry and your colleagues, and you stop. I don't really see it necessarily as being a courageous thing to do, and that's for two, for two reasons. The one, I was in a really low place. Yeah. That voice freed me. Yeah. So it wasn't a courageous thing to do. When someone offers you freedom, it's not, and if someone says to you, listen, the gate's open, it doesn't take courage to run out. No. It just takes number two, which is your truth. Yeah. I recognised what was inside of me was my truth speaking to me. And if my truth speaks to me, I'm going to follow what it, what it asks me to do. Yeah. Where it asks me to go, whatever I need to do with my business or my life or my health or my relationships, I'm following it through. And within a few short years, my life was, um, wow, well, it changed so dramatically, so dramatically. There are no other things happen because of that. And, and as you said, you know, all this comes back to actually living life mm -hmm. by your daily standards. Indeed. And, yeah. you know, I, I knew that I always did live life by mm -hmm. some standards, but mm -hmm. actually reading your book, what mm -hmm. it made me do is it made me mm -hmm. have that more objective look. Indeed. Because, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that really stuck out when we originally met was mm -hmm. you said, okay, you know, like 3% of, of Americans mm. are actually achieving, achieving their, their goals, goals. so yeah, that's well. that's a big percentage of yeah. people yeah, who are not, that are not yeah. doing it, yeah, yeah. And, and, and as you say, I think it's, I think the sad part is as well, is that a lot of people kind of aspire to all these different things and mm. they strive for this and then when they get there they go, yeah. is that it? Yeah, is this all there is? Is this all it is? Yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. it's far more exciting and it's far more... Um, personally motivating for you to live it on a daily basis yeah. because mm. then you're not striving towards that yeah. oh is that it you're actually yeah. kind of living it every single day and saying yeah this Absolutely. is my life yeah. so it's Jerry yeah. share some with the audience yeah. some mm. of the you know the daily standards that you okay. took on at that time so, and that you live your life by today okay. let's say a couple of things first first is that um, a standard for purpose of this philosophy is a basis a criteria a level, a quality, or rule that yes. you set, that okay. you set yes. from within. Yeah. Yeah. So ignoring what the world tells us that you yeah. should have. We're be. not worried about but, them. Yeah, ignore them. You, yeah. you go inside. You sit. And when I see a moment when I did the first time, I was I was standing, and as I and I stood there that, uh, at night in, in this office. I keep, I keep saying in the office, but I'm actually in the office. You know, <laughs> in the office. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm actually in the office. Yeah. And as I stood there. I, one of the things that came up for me, as I mentioned, was to stop setting goals and start setting daily standards. So what, what, the question from me to my true self was, what does that mean? And it showed me many things, because most of us haven't ever taken the time to go, what are my standards? Yeah. Three things, really. What are my standards? 
where did they come from and do they still serve me? Yes. Yeah? Because in that moment, I know it's an awful lot, because it came through conceptual and feelings, I knew that I was living a life with standards that were nothing like the person I really was. Yeah. But I'd taken them on from somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Most of them were not honouring me, not serving me. Um, in that moment, I said, set new standards. So one of the first things that I did was that uh, I'm a bit, bit anal about this. I kind of got this thing and wrote down lots of new standards. And I'll tell you what they are in a second. And I, I colour coded them. Yeah. I laminated them. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> and I gave copies to my children, copies to my wife, and said, you know, I got home. And I said, no, new dad, new standards. So here's what I, what I used to do. What I used to do is I used to work six days a week until 10 o'clock and get home around 11, 11.30 at night. I'd see clients anywhere. And I don't care how little money the clients had you know, if, you know, to become a client. If it was just something, I'd, I'd scratch along and I'd go and get that bit of yeah, business. It's business. It's all those things. And I'd be traveling over the country, which is... Hmm. Anyway, so I set a few new standards. Right in there, and I said, hold on a second. I'm a father and a husband first, before I'm anything else. Yeah? Because you know, business is a thing that I do, but it isn't me. No. This job is a thing that I do, but it isn't me. So our jobs aren't us, because we can just change a job, but we can't change the permanency of us. So I um, said, right, from now on, I'm going to work, just at that point, three and a half days a week. Yeah. I'm working six until late at night. Three and a half days a week. I was missing my children in the morning. Didn't kind of have them around, because I was gone before they were out of bed. Another standard, as standard, every single day, new rule. Take my kids to school every single day. Yeah. As you, and what I'd also said, I'd said I would do it, I would, as a standard, take them home from school three days a week. No more working weekends. This was not a question of, I might do one if a client gave me a call. It was like, so absolute. Yeah. No yeah. working week weekends, no more late nights at night, no more home time. Don't work on a Friday, that's myself, my wife time. Weekends yeah. is family time. So up all these new criteria around clients as well, because in, in those days, any client, any amount of money, I'll just take on and do yeah. some business. Just do it, yeah. So I set a new criteria. Every client I take on must do two things, must do and be two things. One, they must come to me in the office. Yep. From anywhere in the country, meeting with me, come to me, yeah, yeah. in the office. That is something, so come back to that one in a second. The other thing I said was that every client that I see must be a millionaire. Yeah. Yeah, if they're not a millionaire, then they're not my client. They're somebody else's client, and there's enough, you know, there's no competition in, in this industry, there's enough people, if they're not my client, so I set stands around the quality of client that I would have. They must come and see me, if they value me, come and see me in the office, from yeah. wherever you are. And you must, they must be um, a millionaire, because I knew if they're a millionaire for the right quality clients for me to put my time into, which I always did. Absolutely. But then it'd be a win-win yeah. rather than they would win and I would lose, which was happening for the previous 18 years of my life. With clients, not very high earning, not much money. Yeah. I mean, you, when you're working with clients who are low income, low asset clients, you'll end up with low income and low asset, low asset yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah? absolutely. So, and I it's knew, about yeah, who we it's surround it's ourselves exactly. with. Yeah. And I knew what I want to do is, is be a better father, a better husband. That meant more time, you know, because... Um, it is about time we spend, you know, with our wife and our, our husbands and our children. One of the things that came to me um, a while ago was that, probably about 20 years ago, someone said to me, I think it was Zeke Ziegler. Yeah. Um, he said that children spell love, T-I-M-E. And I thought, wow. That made me feel worse at the time. I wasn't giving my children any time. I wasn't yeah. there yeah. for them. No. So... So when I created these new standards, these new rules and criteria and qualities, new basis of operating, it was all around that. Then I bought it on the, on the business because I, I knew I had to do my business, that quality of clients. It's really funny. When you call someone as a prospective client and you say to that client, you know, I've been trying to go meeting with you for the last two years. Um, I've been trying to come down to see you in Bristol or Brighton or whatever. And they say yes. And you say, okay, everything's changed. The whole practice has just changed. I need to let you know right now, I can never offer to come and see you again because the whole practice has changed and the whole way we're doing business now is completely different. So here's, here's a couple of things I'm going to say to you right now. Number one, the only way you can get to come and have a meeting with me from this point onwards is to come to my office in Solihull. That's the only way we're going to do it. And secondly, I can't even give you a time. So I can't let you choose the time. My secretary will let you know when you can come and see me. Yeah. yeah? Now, you can imagine someone when you've been trying to chase them for business for two years, we give them that kind of call. They think one of two things. They think, A, he's lost it. Yeah. <laughs> and I knew, I knew some of them were thinking that. What's yeah. about this idiot here? Yeah. Kind of got a meeting with me down here. They want to yeah. come up and see him right? yeah. when he says, hey. So, they think, A, you've lost it. That's fine. And others, they think, this is interesting. 
What's this about? Mm. That's different. And internally they go, he's changed. Something about this guy has changed. Something yeah. about this woman is different. And if that's where they're hoarding themselves, respect, standards, yeah. Yeah. I'll either fall in line with that or I won't. And here's the thing. Many clients I've been trying to get business with, get meetings with for so many years, fell in line. And I said, okay, we'll come and see you then. When I got there, I told them what a change was in me. Yeah. And this is how things can be around. Because I always, always had the stuff, I always had the ability. But people will give you the respect based on the standards that you set for yourself. So um, just, I'm going to put this, I'll put this into financial terms, just so that it's not to be arrogant in any way, just so that you know. The organization I, I represent on a self employed basis, out of about 1,200 practitioners in the company, I was about 1,000 from the list. Yeah. And you know what that means? That means a new business coming in, I was basically at the bottom you know, yeah. of, yeah. of, of, of the uh, 1,200 uh, advisors. I was somewhere near 1,000 forever. Yeah, uh, and virtually overnight, within within three years, I went. The company grew to 1,600 associates, and I was 28th. Yeah. yeah. On top of that, I, I mean, within a, within three years of my night of revelation, um, I became a millionaire. And just in the following year, to put into perspective, kind of millionaire three years later, doing the same job. I'm sitting in the same office. You can witness that. Yeah. It's in the same room. Yeah. In the same but it's office. Just you now. <laughs> yeah, no one I'm, else, I'm, in, I'm else here. in here. No, no. I'm on my own. Now. Yeah. The office sharing is gone. The, the, the economy, the markets, you know, the products, the services, all pretty much the same. Yeah. And what, what happened, however, is that I changed. Yeah. And when you change, everything changes for you. So within three years, I got to the point where I, I'd proven that the, the economy, well, it's not the economy. The markets, you can't be the markets. The products, it's not. That's not the company, it's not the clients. Oh, it, it's me. So I changed. And when I put the new me into my whole life and for this exercise into my business, People turned up in such huge numbers, and my figures threw through the roof. It took me from that point onwards, and I, um, I made a million dollars in the following year. As in three years of kind of millionaire, the following year I made a million dollars. And people began to say to me, you're not very good at this job, or you weren't. And all of a sudden you're now at the top of the tree. How have you done that? Yeah. And they began to turn up from around the industry to say, because you know, we all share numbers, you know, it's like business. Yeah. Yeah. So people began to turn up and say to me, what did you do? And, I, and I, it's really funny, I started off by saying, well, I found where I really was. I went inside, got all fluffy, and, and they were kind of go, hey. Yeah, I was going to say, in the world of financial yeah, services, yeah, yeah. you probably got the look of, yeah, oh, Derek, have you seriously yeah, yeah. gone mad? No, 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 what really happened, Derek? No, don't tell us that. What really yeah. happened? Yeah, and you're like, no, <laughs> you know? this is what yeah, yeah. really happened, exactly, yeah. and this is what I yeah. want you to understand Absolutely. and see. And this is it. And you know what? I didn't do a big case, didn't get a massive client. I just had lots and lots of wealthy people, yeah. all millionaires, turn up in numbers and do business with me in numbers they'd never done in the whole of my career before. So anyway, when people began to turn up, I, I talked about the fluffy stuff and then, you know what, my genius spoke to me again and he just said, Derek, it's not about you, it's about them. So I talked to them in a way that they would get. So what came out of me was okay. Standards. Here's what I did. I set new standards around X, Y and Z. My life, my business, my health, my relationships, my career, my time, my family, everything. And because they could hear the word standards, it looked like a construct or a process. Yeah. Yeah. A bit like, oh, but so, not, not do goals, but do the standards. Yeah, so standards. Well, yeah. here's the beauty of standards. To look at standards, you have to look at the ones you've already got. So you have to do this. Yeah. You then have to review which ones serve you, which ones honour you. So you have to do this. And then you have to decide which ones are best for you now to look at your life, what serve you and honour you in your life. So you have to do this. In other words... When I talk about standards and they began to write them down, I was coaching and guiding and mentoring people, they had to keep going inside yeah. to decide which standards were right for them. Yeah. And I, I was almost you know, orgasmic because I suddenly realized I'm on something because they were writing out their standards, but they had to go introspectively to discover what right standards were for them. And as they took that journey, they changed. Because bit by bit, they began to discover the true self. And then, you know, what was really fascinating for me, this is a bit, you know, really part of my joy, is that um, <clears throat> I'd meet someone and work with them, and after a couple of sessions, you know, left brain market, you know, front services, sales, people, whatever they might, might call themselves, and then I'd say things like, at the first meeting, it'd be, well, you know, what's the process, what's the steps, and what does that look like, and what's the bottom line here? By two meetings or three meetings, in there, saying things like, well, I was in the car today with my son, and we had this real connection, and I felt this with this client, and so I said to the client, you know, I think I can work with you if we got the right kind of relationship. And then Derek, I let go of these other clients over here that I just felt the work like, I was thinking, oh my gosh, you know, it isn't, didn't just work for me, 
what's working for everybody else. If they set standards from within and dare to be those standards, dare to live as they truly are, everything will change for them. And that's why I then got invited to talk and to speak around the world. And I got invited to um, the, the movie. I did a, I had a cameo in that movie with Jack Canfield yes. and um, John Gray, which is Keeper of the Keys. Because um, they were saying, that's good stuff, you want to, can we get that guy into the film? So I had a call from LA and they said, yeah, come along and film that. Then uh, more talking, became a professional speaker a couple of years ago. Um, and then you know, a, book, a book offer from a Hay House. And all these things occurred. And I think this is true for all of us. We all have a journey that we're on. And the journey that we are on could be the journey that's right for us or the journey that's wrong for us. Let me just define that. Wrong for us means the journey that's, that we take based on what everybody else thinks we should take. I think we should do this. You should go there, dress like that, look like that, eat those, don't eat those, go to that place, look up to this person, join that industry. We end up with a life, and God willing, if we get to 97 years old, we go, that was interesting. It wasn't even my life, I just lived. That was, uh, but it's too late at that point. Yeah. You're, you're shuffling on to the next phase after that. The other journey that we take is we say, hold on a second, this is my life. It was given to me. Your life was given to you. It matters not what anyone else in the world says or thinks you should do with your life. Their life was given to them. Yeah. Your life is given to you. Live your life. Above all things, be true to thyself. Live your life. And if that means you have a feeling or intuition or guidance, you should go left instead of going right, or to take that degree instead of that, or to take that job and not that one, this client, follow that intuition. And I know what it's like to follow the journey of true self. So initially you might think to yourself, hold on a second. Mm -hmm. Am I brave enough to do this? Can I really, everyone's saying this, I'm, I'm going to follow my own intuition. Who am I to tell me what to do? Mm -hmm. That's what people say to themselves. Yeah. So they ignore their own voice yeah. and listen to somebody else's. This is yeah. what people do every single day. And my philosophy says, actually, your voice, your inner genius, your, is your truth, is your guru. It knows you better than you know yourself, your thinking self. It knows you better than your thinking self. It's your heart. It's your intuition. Follow it. And if it gives you intuition and guidance. That's its language for you. That's how it speaks to you. That's how it shares with you. And if you have the courage to follow even just the small things, it will give you bigger guidance. It won't just say step over this stone. It will say take a left down that lane. Yeah. It won't say take a left down that lane. It will say get on a boat yeah. and go over there. And that's where you need to be. So it's about following the small things. When I um, did, my, I had a whole epiphany, whatever it was that night. But as I work with other people, I guide them to follow the small things as well as the big things. Some people are fearful to follow the big things that come out of them. Yeah. But as I say, follow the small things. And if you follow that, your true self begins to believe in you. Yeah. It begins to trust you. Yeah. And when someone trusts you, does it share more or less with you? Exactly. exactly. It shares more with you. And as your true self shares more with you, you've now got a guru linked to, your, linked to infinite intelligence, linked to God, linked to everything that is guru direct line to you. Yeah. That's your guru. And that's why we should follow that guru. Because whatever anybody else says in their life isn't necessarily for you. So my philosophy, as you know from the book, isn't about me saying to anyone, do this, 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 this. I'm just saying, find yourself. Yeah. Discover your true self and begin to be that person because that's where your truth is. That's you. And if you want guidance, go inside because yeah. that's where your truth is for you. That, that's what really you're all about. And if you let my life say just one, one other thing, and that is yeah, that um, if, if, for example, we, we begin to pay attention to what life is really all about, and I think life is, is about, firstly, recognition that this is your life, this is my life. This is so important to point that most people live a life based on what they think everybody else tells them they should do, and then end up at, I don't know, either in therapy or at some point they're thinking, I've got to find myself again. Mm. Trying to find yourself at 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Why not just be yourself? Yeah. Okay, so how long should you be yourself for? How about just for today? Why don't we take the pressure off? If I give you a goal and say, your goal is to, you know, to make a million bucks within three years or to live in that house on that road, be in this position or to be a multimillionaire, whatever it might be, to be on stage, um, you set that as a goal. Often goals give us pressure. Because they tell us, that's what I want. There's a gap between where I am and what I want. Yeah. Therefore, that gap is what really shouts the most to us. And that gap 
is, rec- is recognised as failure to be unconscious. The, the gap says, you haven't got it. Yeah. You haven't got it. Now you want it, but you haven't got it. So And then you get into that whole negative spiral exactly, yeah. and, and, and all and, the and, reasons and why it can't down. happen. Exactly, Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. imagine doing that for another week and another year, and then two years go by, and then five years go by, and then ten years go by, and you still haven't got the goals. You were told, set big goals, enormous goals, and ten years go by, and you still haven't got them. What does that tell you? It tells you to your unconscious mind that goals don't really work. I might just set them because the boss said or because I went on a course and I was told to set goals. But you know what? I don't believe it anymore. I don't believe it. So the problem that we have is that goals give us other pressures, other stresses. When we see the gap, they give us more stresses. The difference with standards. Standards say, okay, set standards from within. Sit down. As you see, there's an exercise where you can sit down, calm yourself, steady yourself, begin to listen, to breathe and listen to your inner voice ask questions and have those words captured. They're your standards. The standards say, standards say, just do this for today. Not for next week, not for a month, not for a year, just, when you set a standard and your basis criteria level of quality of all, set it in one of seven areas and do it just for today. Now, you know, there are seven key areas. I mean, can I mention the website? Yeah, of course you, you can. Far I mean, away, yeah, please. The, the website is derek-mills.com. D-E-R-E-K dashmills.com and on there there's a free download which is called the, it's just an initial document to help get people used to reviewing their old standards realising that they've got them <laughs> and then setting new standards and committing to those so it's derek-mills.com and I can highly yeah. recommend this download because yeah. I actually did this yeah. myself and fantastic. I would suggest that it's a good thing for you it, to it's, do it's a fantastic thing because what you end up doing is then you're realising that gosh where did my standards come from what are the basis from which I'm working but whether from mum, dad, brother, sister, community, media, my last job, my career, my first college, well, where do they come from? Yeah. And, we, and when we realise that point, we then say, okay, maybe we'll set new standards. Because yeah. until someone tells you, it's your choice, maybe exactly. you didn't realise that. Yeah. So set new standards. And there are seven key areas. They are your personal health and fitness, your environment. My environment, I don't necessarily mean the green environment, but that also could be for someone else. But your environment is your, attitude, your internal attitude and your external environment, what you surround yourself with. Internal, you control your mind. Right? We know above all the creatures on the planet, we have the ability to control our thoughts. We know this from ancient ancient texts. And the most people live their lives, and they have in there, if you go into the garden of your mind today, mm-hmm. is it a pit, or is it a garden? Is it a beautiful rose garden with green grasses and lush plants and vegetables and fruits and everything you can support? Because here's the thing, when you go into the garden, that is your mind, you need to have it nurture you, mm. give you good feedback, good nourishment and good feelings and sunshine and green grasses and pleasantness. But if you go into your mind which is, and your attitude is dark and dank and you go to your mind, that's what it will feed you. Yeah. If you go into your mind and you're not taking care of the standard of your thinking and you go, you go into your mind, there'll be a pit which is dark and sticky. And you don't get anywhere if you're dark and sticky in a pit. So one of the things I uh, realised that the environment that we talk about is the internal environment and the attitude, and the external environment, what we listen to. That's in not the radio. Yeah. yeah? Because it, when you have the radio, when every hour it dumps some negative news in your head. Yeah. yeah? Not reading the newspapers. Yeah. You know, as standard. You know, not, yeah. what, not watching the TV programmes at all, because I've spoken now on different continents around the world, and I always say, in the UK, people listen to the news every, every hour, every half an hour, TV, radio, whatever, newspapers, read them all, and I say, is it the same here? I say, because the newspapers and the TV in the UK, the news shows who's died, who's yep. been killed, yep. murder, no, whatever's war, terrible bad, that's bad happened economy, in the world today. Yeah, yeah that's bad what economy, we report. Horrendous stuff. So all that's there. You know, everywhere around the world, it's the same. Yeah. They say the same. No, well, yeah, that's, that's in our paper as well. India, Jamaica, America. That's in their papers as well. Yeah. But here's the thing. Why is a corn-fed chicken yellow? Because it's each yellow, each yellow, each yellow corn. corn. Yeah. yeah. So if you feed your mind with what you hold in your mind, yeah. pitch rather than garden, or what you surround yourself with, people and newspapers and tea, then you, you can't be surprised if your life ends up challenging and difficult with problems and you can't get through and things are just difficult and you, you go into your mind, there's no garden, just darkness, and you wonder why you're not getting anywhere in life. Yeah. So it's, it's vital. I mean, it, it's crucial, crucial that we begin setting new standards for our thinking, that's the internal environment, and what we surround ourselves with. So the, so the, pa- the papers now have got really clever. If you go onto the, uh, the trains or the tube, 
uh, around London and rest of the rest of the country, the Metro newspaper that's free. Yeah. yeah. You go to London, you have the London Evening Standard, yeah. which you used to have to pay for. Now it's free. So people, people are literally on the trains going free paper. Yeah. Like free negative dump into your life as well. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Absolutely. It's not costing a pound anymore. It's free. Yeah. Rubbing their hands, thinking free newspaper. Yeah. Free negative dump in your mind. Yeah. Why would you? Why would you do that? Yeah. And then exactly. on your hour and a half journey home, whatever it is, on in your car. Why would you listen to the news every half an hour yeah. and have additional um, yeah. dump? So, so that's really important to have the environment that we set up for ourselves control. We control. We have choices. Yeah. So set new standards, new regimes, new rules. We don't do this, we do this. We listen to that, but not that. If that comes on, we turn that off, put a CD on. So what can we do instead? We can replace that environment in our car with um, inspirational, motivational, yep. business, CDs, you know, spiritual CDs and DVDs. And that. We can choose what we want to have fed into our minds. So what I'm saying is there's a massive area here, which I call environment, which is around who you, what you are inside your environment and the external. Then there's relationships, uh, very, very simple. My, um, my father gave us a couple of rules when we were younger because you know, I lost my mother when she was 36. My father, seven of us, seven kids. And uh, he brought us up really on two rules, very simple rules. He said, number one, drop the bad company. Yeah. He's meant whoever you're around, if, it, if the bad company is not good for you, drop them. Yeah. And the other one was, you must keep good company. My dad worked in a factory all of his life he was an immigrant from Jamaica to this country. No, no qualifications whatsoever, but he knew. He brought up seven kids, all to get up to be from, from between five and 17, up to adults, yeah. Yeah, with none of us getting in any problems or any troubles after us. Because he knew, uneducated, uneducated as he was, he knew, you'll become like those with whom you associate. Absolutely. So this factory working guy just said, drop the bad company. Because yeah. if you stick with them long enough, you become like them. Yeah. You must keep good company. Seek out people who are good and nurturing for you. And guess what? you probably get the best out of your life if you do that. Absolutely. He had no qualifications to name, but he knew that. Yeah. So there's relationship standards that we can set, and of course that's vital for um, you know, personal, if you're in, um, in a relationship with someone, not just a friend, but in terms of you know, um, a loving relationship, you know, partner, husband, wife, spouse. You know, I spoke to um, Dr. John Gray a couple of years ago, we had a couple of conversations, and he wrote uh, Men from Mars, Women yeah. from Venus. So I was talking about standards in relationships and what I thought I was writing, which didn't, didn't enter this book, but there's other works that I'm doing. And he said, Derek, he said, relationships are all about standards. They are. And if we set the right standards within relationships, it can, it can either uh, empower and make that relationship stronger. But if you don't have standards in relationships, then eventually it will be a lose-lose scenario. Yeah. And there's a long conversation, but the, the idea is, you know, relationship standards are vital, much with our family and our friends, but whatever. So then the other thing is around standards is um, is family. So family is, is to me, I wasn't seeing my family. So it became really, to was top on this when I made some new shifts, set some new rules up, some new levels I would, I would adhere to, some new qualities I'd be as a person, yeah. as a father, as a husband, as a brother, you know, as a son to my, to my father. I set these new standards up and I committed to those standards. Then we have the emotions. And uh, you may notice there's a pattern here because personal health and fitness is the P. Yeah. It's, it's called perfect. Yeah. So um, personal health. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, personal health and fitness, environment, relationships, family, emotions, which is our emotions, and there's also career and time. It's perfect. Yeah. yeah. So the emotions is really simple because of time. I'll leave it like this, and that is that most people in life do not recognize that they do most of their emotions. The emotions don't do you. Yeah. Yep. So it is over decades have shown that when you're angry or frustrated or whatever it is, you're doing that. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. You're, you're doing Take it. that so responsibility. Absolutely, yeah. So if someone cuts you up in the car on the way yep. home today and you get angry and you chase them and you give them, give them the fist or give them the, give them the finger, whatever it might be, and you get angry, you transfer that anger to home and to whatever, you're doing all of that. Yep. All they did was they drove their vehicle yep. in front of you and you did the rest. Mm. Yeah. So just one example. So when I realized that, it was like, hold on a second. So I have, I have standard emotional responses in certain scenarios. And if I'm doing them, I can do other more empowering emotions in those scenarios. And I can day by day practice doing those until I get into that same scenario and I'll react differently. So by setting new standards, forming new habits of emotions, you literally change who you are. Yeah. And when you change, yeah. everything, everything will change changes. for you. Yeah. And the other two were, were career and time. You know, I, I talked about some of the career standards earlier on, just a few of them, the early ones. 
and and time and what I did. Um, time is an important one for me because the time standards is really simple. It says discover who you are, yeah. spend your time on this earth, set new standards around your time on this earth being that person. That opens up a whole whole area. For it's everybody. a game changer in a big way. Absol- that is, absolutely. Isn't it? And I want to just kind of then now to take the pressure off. So I've got there all these new standards. I've got to do this and perfect, you know. So how do I do this? Part of how we do standards is we say, just do it for today. Take the pressure off, not for three years, not even for a month, just for today. Set standards from within and stick at those standards just for today. Just until you get your head back on your pillow tonight. Stick at your standards. Just for today. And if, if the good Lord gives you tomorrow morning, well, that's another day. Yep. Do your standards just for that day. This is not, a, this is not for next week. You yeah. get this, don't you? This is yeah. not for next month. This is for this right is now. This is not for 24. Yeah. This is just for the day that you yeah. are in. Yeah. And I tell you what, that seems consciously good sense because it takes the pressure off long-term world, the pressure of having to be in and seeing the gap. It just says, discover who you are from within, set standards. And whatever time you say, it's 2 or 2.30 now, just be this until about, when I go to bed at 10 tonight. Can I do that? I reckon I've got a much better chance of doing that and sticking to my standards than trying to be this thing over the next 3, 5, 10, and 20 years. But this isn't new wisdom. 2,000 years ago, a gentleman walked around the planet, Christ. And Christ walked on the planet and he, 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 he spoke in stories and metaphors and he gave us many things, many words that he said. And one of the things he gave us to remember was the Lord's Prayer. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're a Christian, because if you're a Christian, you believe that he's no son of God. If you're a Muslim, you believe he was a prophet. But either way, they're both these huge religions believe that this guy walked around a couple of thousand years ago. But in the middle of the Lord's Prayer, there were four words I found fascinating. And the four, four words were, give us this day. Give us this day. Not this week, not this month, not this fiscal year, not this three-year business plan. Give us this day. Son of God, or one of the most respected prophets, Son of God, he's probably right about that one. Yeah. Now, if he meant to say, give us this month, or work by the week, or work by the quarter, or the fiscal year, I think he'd have said so, wouldn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Give us this, give us this fiscal this year, day. a daily yeah. bread. He, but he didn't say, give us yeah. this, because he knew it's about getting from the day, getting the rest of you into there, getting through this day, helping someone else in this day, loving in this day, being your light in this day, getting all you can be, being all you can be in this day today. That's what it's about. And I know that for absolute truth. Because he had meant to be something else, he'd have said something else. He said, give us this day. But somewhere else in the Bible, he also says, have no worry for tomorrow. Yeah. Now, if you didn't get the give us this day bit, you've got to get the how, don't worry about tomorrow yeah, bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When you put those two together, it's, yeah. kind of, it's about the now. Yeah, it's about it's being like present and today. Now. And that's why when, I, when, I, when the um, concept of standards came through me, about set standards and stick them just for today, just for one day at a time. If you open the morning, just, just for today, no longer, just about, be all you can be, do it today. I knew that was coming from somewhere else. I knew that came from the source, because I'm not clever enough. Most of it come out, comes out to me, I don't think about it. I pretty much say what comes up when I'm sitting down or standing and I'm channeling, what comes up, comes up. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a really interesting thing that we are all connected, and we're all connected to the source. Yeah. So when I say there's a genius inside each of us, there really is. It's, it's the genius that's you, but that genius is also connected to everything else that is. Yeah. And therefore, as part of that oneness, we are all together in the same. So, so there's, if there's genius to be had, it's to be had through you. Yeah. It's, be, it's to be had through each and every one of us. But when we live our life as non-self, yeah, when we start listening to the inner voice, and we start into the outside world and doing all these things, we don't get the genius guidance. Yeah. We, don't, we, don't, we don't get the inner guru saying to us, Claire, Derek, let's do this. Let's yeah. turn this way or yeah. this feels right. We don't get the intuition. We don't get the, in, the instinct that you know, the Aborigines have, have lived off for thousands of years. We don't get that. I mean, wonder why we struggle. Yeah. And what, what I'd like to just consider, that, have everyone to consider, is that if there's a genius, a guru, no less, inside of you, what would be the use of having that guru and genius inside of you if you paid no attention to it? Yeah. And the reverse of that would be, what could your life look like? if you turned and listened to the inner guru, turned on your genius yeah. and paid attention. And what if you, what, what, I know what, what the answer to some of those questions are, some of the questions come back to my Derek, but how can I, do, how can I trust myself? For all these years, I'm 30 or 40 years old, how do I just trust myself? And I just say, well, one day at a time. Yeah. No, 
set your standard, that keep you in your true self, live your truth just for today. Yeah. For the, and, and here's the thing, if you keep doing that just one day at a time, you'll, and you, you do it long enough, just as a test, maybe, maybe you don't believe any of this stuff. No. Nope. Let's suppose you thought, well, well, this hocus, works, well, I well, promise well, you, do this. You, suppose, <laughs> yeah. suppose you said, well, load of hocus pocus, well, what if you just did it for today, and you did it every day that God gave you, long enough to see what would happen if you did. So I'm going to prove anything. But each of us is given a day and given a life. It's our day and it's our life. In that day, set standards, live as our truth, so follow our truth, be guided by self, and keep doing that the more that you, every day that you're given. And do it long enough to see what would happen if you did. Because then I've got nothing to prove. You'll be proving it to yourself. Exactly. Yeah, the shift in your life. And I want to say, when people talk about um, the shift, I talk about the uh, the financial shift because I was broken, repossessions and all the rest of it. So I want people to know that it wasn't just that I felt better and, and enlightened and fresh and light and love. It literally gave me guidance in my daily business yeah. that meant to me to convert my business into something which is phenomenally different. But it also, my true self, as with all of us, is very, very creative, incredibly creative when we tap in. Because by tapping into my true self, I was able to find that I was a creative genius. Not only did I star in that film, or a co-star, should I say, with them, um, I became an executive producer of another film. So mm -hmm. someone approached me and just said, Derek, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, you know what? I went inside. Yeah, I can executive produce a film. Yeah. Did it before? No. Yeah. But something inside me tells me I can do that. Yeah. So and my creative genius began to flow, and I gave some guidance, and some other stuff came up for me. Um, we ended up um, working with um, director, he's an actor and director, Adrian Lester, Mm -hmm. um, was on BBC The Hustle. Yeah. Um, his wife, Lolita Chakrabarti, actress and director as well, and, 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 and playwright. And to put together a film company, I was the executive producer, and never done it before. And the film that we that we made was a film short called Of Mary. You can check it out on IMDb um, database. And the film which was screened at Rain Dance 2011, and last year we won the American Best Short Film at the PAFF uh, Film Festival. So from these just little things and a huge amount of things that have happened for me that I can, which I know a couple of things. The first is that I could not set goals around this stuff if I didn't know I had it in me. Yeah. So it was just like ridiculous to set goals around those things. But when I went into my inner genius, my creative genius began to flow. So when I do things, I have no idea that I could do before. Yeah. This is one of the parts of a huge payoff of the true self. You get stuff inside of you right now. You have no idea what it is, but it's in you nonetheless. Yeah. And when you act, act from your true self space, it will begin to flow in your life. People begin to say to you, how on earth did you go from there? How did you do that? And you've got this person, you're coaching that person that works over there, and you've you got politicians in your... How have you done that, Claire? And you say, well, uh, it was in me. I've been there. And, and I think the one thing that I always, and, and you can all relate to this, guys, because I'm going to say the thing that I say to you all the time again, and, and that is I always encourage people to kind of do nothing and just allow that voice to come through because Absolutely. I always say that doing nothing is seriously underrated. Absolutely. Because yeah, people yeah. just, you know, they think that they've got to be busy and they think that the only yeah. way that they can actually achieve the results yeah, yeah, they want yeah. is by being busy. Exactly, yeah. Getting and it's by yeah, kind yeah. of, you know, I've got to pound, you know, yeah. it's like, you know, the runner, I've got to pound the pavement yeah, yeah, yeah. so I can achieve what it is that yeah, I yeah. want. And actually, that's, it is true, but it's not true because yeah. it's about just breathe and exactly. allow allow yourself to hear that voice yeah, yeah, yeah. because I know for many many years I didn't trust my intuition mm -hmm. I didn't you know as you say you know you did you'd be dry you know when I started in the world of financial services I had a little A to Z for every single right, area you know there was no sat nav Patience was there yeah and Patience. you'd be sort of that, yeah. you know you'd finish one A to Z and drive yeah, yeah, to another yeah, yeah. county and you'd yeah, start exactly, the next yeah, yeah. one you know you'd open the book this. again you get the big, the big exactly big that's it one. yeah yeah where yeah. are we going to go <laughs> And, and, you know, and there are always instances where you yeah. get somewhere and you'd be like, right, okay, so this is telling me to go here, but there's just something telling me that I do need to go left. And, and I didn't listen. Okay. And, and, you know, now that's something that I listen to massively because we, we are creatures of habit and we can very much keep going round in circles. Yeah. But what your philosophy does is it stops that habitual circle yeah. mm -hmm. and it actually says, well, okay, if I just take that time to hear this voice, mm -hmm. which is me, and, exactly. and I always encourage people that, 
you know, we we can have things and we can do things, but actually the most valuable thing that we all own is this. Yeah because it's the most amazing computer that we walk yeah. around in every single day and there's nothing quite like the asset that is you. Indeed. So it's about trusting that intuition mm. and trusting that I can do this. Yes. And, and, and like you say, don't you set yourself up for a fall. Do it on a yeah, daily, daily basis. basis. This is it. Because yeah. by doing it on that daily basis, yeah. it is a game changer. It is. And you've only got to do this until you get your head back on your pillow tonight. Yeah. And this is age old wisdom. Yeah. yeah. You do not know you've got tomorrow. No. So what are you what are you going to do tomorrow? Yeah. Why don't you just do you today? Yeah. So when I'm this, I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be. I'm going to tell my friends how much I love. I'm going to hug my friends. Tell them how much I love them. Tell my kids the same, and my partner, my spouse, and be loving and sharing. Um, when? Oh, tomorrow. Yeah. Really? Today. No. It's about being you today. So what you have. Yeah. See, as far as I'm aware, you know, when you when you when you're in that hearse, there isn't a roof rack that says, you know, here's all these worldly goods. It's just you in the hurts, yeah. you know, yeah. or your body in the hurts. You can't take yeah. it with you using, no. using that metaphor. Spiritually, of course, we're gone. But the point is, nothing we have of the earth can we take with us. Yeah. But we can be who yeah. we really are. Yeah. We can begin to live out the essence of our truth. So when the ego says, I must have that, I must have that, and got away one of those. You know, I, you know what I have fun with right now, all the time, and I, do, is, I love paying attention to what people think I should do whether it be in restaurants or whatever, in a shop, whatever, and then do what I really feel I should do. You know? And I used to embarrass my wife and kids, you know, Dad, you can't say that. Well, that's all I want to say. Yeah, I can. That's all I'm going to say. That's what I'm going to do here. Or in business, I might go, why, you, why did you get rid of 90% of your clients? Why did you? Because they weren't serving. They were dragging me everywhere. They had no respect for me. They were getting me to go and see them every weekend and at night, knowing they had a, a wife, knowing they had... Um, you know, a family, so therefore, what was that telling you about them? So they were winning them. So I said, please let someone else serve this. Because people were going, what do you mean by that? So you gave away all your clients, well, 90% of them, yeah, because um, it felt the right thing to do yeah. for me. Yeah. You know? And I've literally met with people in uh, both here and in the States, some of my best friends uh, based in America, where I've met them because, you know, the dots I followed. Steve Jobs from Apple, he uh, references, he talks about uh, you know, looking behind him and joining up the dots of his life and seeing where it came from and where we get to today. What I'd like to kind of just perhaps just throw out there is what if we could just use our true self to throw out our future dots and to say, okay, today, where's the dot? You know, where am I today? And be on that spot. Come on, just for today. Yeah. Just be that today. And if I'll give you tomorrow, well, where's wow, where's it leading me? So, oh, the spot's there now, so that's where I've got to be today. And as you then, when you do that, you're trusting yourself, going into the day saying, where's my spot yeah. today? Where, 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 where am I today? Where am I inside myself today? And that releases, uh, there are so much to share, but one of the things I have had the joy of experiencing week and month and year after year since my waking up is that my true self really does guide me the more I pay attention to it. It really does. Mm. I mean, it really does. Yeah. Because it, it was guiding me. That now, now I can say, if I'm going to go into a, yeah, on a small level, if I go into a, to a dinner, uh, you know, for an event I'm going to, whatever, and there's no table, there's no table plans, you can sit where you want to sit. I go to a dinner, and I literally use my true self to, you know, just to kind of just to fill the room. And as I fill the room, I'm going to go this way. I kind of walk through here. It's that table. If there's chairs available, I, it's that, and I'll sit there. Yeah. Yeah. And I promise you that when I do that, something comes out of me being in that space. And what's interesting, when I share this with people, they go, well, Derek, I've tried that. And I sat on the train, I followed my nutrition on the train, or at a dinner, nothing happened. And I said, well, hold on a second. We are all connected here. So when you are part of the oneness, part of the connectedness, it isn't just about you. So you may have been in that place, in that chair, and said the right thing felt the right feeling, expressed in your, in your eyes, or just been warm enough, or shone some of your light into the world, and the person next to you is why you're there, not for you. Yeah. You were there for them. Some people say well, to me, well, I didn't get anything out of that, nothing happened. And I say, well, it wasn't, perhaps it wasn't about you. Yeah. Perhaps it was around the person that you were there at that table, and they're going, oh my gosh, the thing that Claire said changed my, am I going to do this differently because of that? Or even, if, even if it's just a smile. Yeah. You know, we're all born, come from light. And if we share our light with someone, maybe they go home into their darkened home and they share some of their light because it was given to them. Yeah. So 
begin to, 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 be, to be led by our true selves and to almost you know, let, letting the ego, you know, push the ego away and say, I'm going to go into this place and just be me. But not necessarily be me for me, just be me. And if something comes out of that for me, that's great. If something comes out of that for the, for the people at the table, and that's wonderful because you know, I'm connected to them as well. And original, energetically and spiritually, we're all connected. So when I'm helping you, I'm helping me. Yeah. You know, I'm not just doing this in this life. So what can I get? So I can increase my count of stuff. So I can't take I can't take the stuff with me when I when I shuffle off this mortal coil. But all I can do is be me in, the, in that place. As I share my light and you share your light, then the place is lighter for all of us. Mm. Now we all get to see more the more each of us shares our light. Does that make sense? It does, it does. And, and you know, it's, like you say, it's, we, we're conditioned to, to not show our true colours and mm. to not be ourselves. And, you know, one thing that I've always been told my entire life is how you're very opinionated, you know, mm. and you always say it as you see it. And mm. it's like, well, yeah, because I believe that it's best for me to be honest. What would yeah. you rather? Would you rather that I told you what you wanted to hear? Wow just because you wanted to hear it. And, mm. and I think that people find that challenging, don't they? But yeah, they as you've said, yeah. it's not anybody else's life, mm. it's your own. Indeed. And for you to be the most powerful and for you mm. to leave the, the impact that you're meant mm. to leave here on planet Earth mm -hmm. and on this plane, yes. then the only way that you can do that mm. is, as you say, by being your true self Absolutely. and living the life mm. for mm. now. Yeah and not for anything in the future because we just never yeah. know whether that's We don't know whether that's there. And also it is about the now because each of us, you know, we all come from light and energy mm. and love. And we come here in different physical bodies, but we're still part of that same light. Yeah, exactly. So, so when we end up, um, ex see, you are the universe expressing, universe expressing itself. Yeah. I am. Yeah. Each of us is the universe expressing itself in a different way. Yeah. So this gift was given to you. So for you to hide that gift and shove it down and look around, see what else is doing, just copy them, and having your light diminish and diminish and diminish. Now you'll know at 97 or 102, now you'll go, hmm, didn't quite live that life as me. And this, is, this is important because at that point, this, see, we're in a physical world here, aren't we? Yeah. But we are spirit. Yes. And when we move off this physical world, we will begin to think, hold on a second, I am now moving on. So I must have been here in this physical body for a reason. Spirit in a physical body, but here for a reason. And I think the answer to why we're here is inside each of us. Yeah. And the more we shove ourselves down and listen to the world and everybody else and hide our true selves, the less chance of us getting the answer. Yeah. The less chance of us releasing our gifts, yeah. releasing our talents, sharing our light in the world. And when we do that and we share our gifts and share our talent in love and light for the people, we win. Because I'm going to share something with you which is uh, it just con it concerns all of us, and that is that so many people in the world today see themselves as being separate and apart. Mm. Um, from a country point of perspective, mm. you know, one country is not another country, one human is not a human, even if they're in the same room, they say, I'm separate to that person. But actually, there's, no, there's nothing in science, or metaphysics, or spirituality, or religion that says we're all separate. It all says we're all eternal and we come from and we go to more part of the oneness and every other language, even from a quantum physics point of view, yeah. you know, we're all energy. Everything, all me, you, the table, yeah, the, the basis, everything. everything is energy. Yeah. You break it down, it comes to, oh, that's, that's energy. So yeah. this is intelligent energy of the universe, universe expressing itself. So I began to, to share through the philosophy that if we begin to walk around our daily lives as if we're part of a oneness, as if a part of something greater, you know, I am you. And you are me, yeah. and we're all kind of one thing. We then treat each other differently. Because you know, let's suppose you know, left hand, right hand. We got that right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another one after yeah. my own heart. I don't know the difference either. So, 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 so that my right hand is unlikely to get a gun and shoot the left hand. Yeah. Why? Because it recognises it's part of the same body. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um. You look at the inside of the body, and the heart beats and regulates the blood flow throughout our body. The blood carries nutrients, not just to the center, but to all extremities of the body and the heartbeat to support that. Our lymph system, everything around, everything in our body, one thing supports the other because it recognizes it's part of itself. The stomach takes in food, doesn't keep it, you notice that? Yeah. It disperses it to every yeah. extremity of our being. 
and one hand and one hand's bottom. Now, if I'm thirsty, you know, and I'm, I'm away from the cup, and, I'm, and I need that, and I reach my hand out, my body will, auto, without even thinking, will automatically serve yeah. and get me towards the cup so I can drink from that cup. And when, when I drink from that cup, the body system distributes the nutrients throughout. What's my point? We're all part of one body, all of us. And the moment we begin to realize that we're part of the oneness, we stop shooting each other. We start supporting one another. We start nurturing one another. We start sharing the goodness and the nutrients and the, and the world, the, what's available in the world becomes available to all parts of that body. And the reason in the world today there are uh, fights and issues and wars and, is because everybody that's in those places thinks that they're separate from everybody else yeah. and it's wrong. Yeah. Every one of us is part of, this, of the same thing. Well, where we came from knew that, where we go to knows that. But in these physical bodies, we're just simply nothing more than expressions of the universe. So, you know, if in my business, it might sound a bit odd, um, for, you know, come from a, 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 a business uh, person, but when I sit down with prospective clients or with existing clients, I just sit there and I just hold a space for them and feeling them as part of me. And me as part as part of them. I feel that connect. I look at the what's called the A, B, C, and C. Yeah. And the A, B, C, and C. The A is, is is me being my authentic true self. The B is where I'm balanced. Really important to be balanced when you're dealing with other people. Balance meaning that if you're in it just for you, that's called greed, and greed is a negative emotion that takes us down. If we do it all for them, you become a martyr. It's all well and good that they get everything out of you, but you can't pay your bills because you're in a physical world, whether you like it or not, with a physical world, and you can't live and you can't survive, and you go down. You're on the street. So you can't be existing greed, and you can't be existing in a pure martyrdom, because at the end of it, in one way, everybody loses, another way, you lose. So it must be a balance when you're dealing with any, with any other person on a win-win basis. And the centeredness, the C is the centeredness. We must hold a space other people yeah. to be centered and recognizing god this person's just me it's light it's part of me you know it's, it's who i am it's what i am different expression on their journey in this universe doing amazing and learning things and we're going to perhaps meet off again because we already know each other yeah you know absolutely. we've been there before yeah. and we're going to go elsewhere after this place and when you begin to sit with someone who says to you what do i do with my money or how what product do i buy or, how do i check that you hold that space that centered place them and the second c comes in so you're a, B, C, and C. Authentic, balanced, centered. And the final C comes in, which is the connectedness. Yeah. When, you, when you're A, B, C, and C, the connectedness says, actually, I really am yeah. connected to this person. Yeah. This isn't just you know, some kind of um, uh, spiritual hope or some dream. No. I really am than connected that. to this yeah. person. Now, yeah. I love the idea of, uh, they have in quantum physics that shows how we are all energetically connected. Yeah. Uh, no, no spaces, no gaps. That's it. Yeah. And even if you had a, if you had a machine here that sucked out all the air and created a vacuum, you put light can go through a vacuum. So even light, you know, can, so there, there yeah. are no gaps between us. We really are connected. I know that's only a, a, a metaphor unless you're a quantum physicist. But what if we be, begin to live in our lives as if we are connected and we sit here and have a connection? I'm going to do the best for you. Yeah. And here's the thing: if, you, if you're in business, this is where the bottom line gets paid off. If you're in business or in sales. And the person, the customer or prospect in front of you gets a feeling that, wow, she's authentic. Yeah. And see, she's definitely working in my interests. She to make, make a living, but she's definitely working in my interests. Centered, I can, I can feel that. See, they don't think these thoughts. No. They feel no, them. They feel And they feel them. a yeah. connection with yeah. you. They then start saying things like, I'll do business with you. Yeah. 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 I'm doing business with you. And it's a game changer. I know, you, I know yeah. you're all more expensive. Yeah. Well, I know that this guy you've worked yeah. with the last 20 years, but I'll do business. This, this was the biggest breakthrough I had when I went from zero to hero, yeah. quote unquote, um, in those few years, is that I saw people in this very room at this table who are coming to me and saying, you know, you're not the brightest guy we've ever met. You know, I'm not the brightest guy on this floor. <laughs> not the most qualified guy on this floor. Uh, all the rest, but they would say, we feel we want to deal with you. Yeah. And we want to deal with you. Yeah. Is that okay with you? Yeah. And I went from scratching around for business to people yeah. coming in saying, do we have enough? Yeah, to be, to yeah, be, to be your client. You. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely. Happened, and that's happened yeah. dozens of times. Yeah. Because there was a shift. Yeah. And the shift isn't just a shift in me, it's a shift by me saying there's yeah. this connection here. And when you sit down with people, regardless of what they've done in their lives, and this is advice to anyone who wants to break through and, uh, another level, no matter who you sit down with, they are a spirit. 
in a human body. And if you connect with them at that level through the A, B, C, and C, you'll be a level of, of communication with them that no one else has, has, has got. Yeah. Yeah. Now do business with you rather than somebody else. Yeah. I love it. Derek, I'm conscious of your time. And on that, I'm afraid yeah. that we're going to have to. Yeah, we've run out of time. We're going to have to stop. But I hope that you've enjoyed yeah. that. I hope that you've gained as much from this interview as, you know, as I did when I met Derek originally and when I read the book. And check it out. Um, if you Google literally the 10 second philosophy, Derek Mills, it will come up. Um, I bought it within kind of six hours of actually meeting Derek and I'd read half of it by the next day. Um, so for me, it was a real game changer. It, it, it made me look at things in a really, really different way. And, and, you know, I was very familiar with a huge amount of what you already, mm. you know, you already encourage people mm. to, to think of and to mm. look at. Um, but, Thank you, Derek. It's been My an pleasure. absolute pleasure to spend some time with you Thank again you. today and to be able yeah. to share this with the people in the audience. Mm. And, um, yeah. Yeah, I will say thank you very much because, you know, um, for me, this is what I do. I only do me now. Yeah. So you give me the opportunity to share with you and therefore share with others is just me being me. That's, that's my realisation. Um, so it's, it's me that's thankful. Really appreciate it. No. Really do well, it. everybody, I hope that you've enjoyed your very special Motivational Monday this week. I've had real great pleasure bringing this interview and actually being in the iconic room where it happened. <laughs> I've got to be shift honest, I'm quite excited about here. that. Yeah, the shift happened here, <laughs> where we are right now. Anyway, have a fabulous rest of your day. I will be back on line again in less than two hours with how to girl tv with carol dodsley and okay. um, so join us at five o'clock for our business chit chat but thanks derek yeah, thank you thank all you. for watching and we'll see you again 